Hello, hello, and welcome to my thought on this lovely sunny Monday. I finally have gotten a chance to read the Sunday Times from two weeks ago, and they were discussing the problem that with the lockdown, you can now meet your friends, uh, but there are no public toilets. There, There's no place you can go. There's no public toilets. And they are talking that there's a, a committee, in the, there's a, a group in Britain called the British Toilet uh, Association. And they are working on what they're going to do about letting people go to the toilet. Because I don't know how it is in Britain. I know in America it's illegal to go outside. You're not supposed to do that. Although I think all of us have been caught short and have done it at one time or another. But um, you're not supposed to. So they're, they're thinking and they're saying instead of calling it public toilets, they're going to call it sanitation centers. So I was thinking, you know, that's not a bad thing. Uh, so many funny things always happen when you think uh, you're going to be caught short um, or when you go into a strange toilet. Um, one of the things that I remember is uh, when, I, when I was so poor and living in really tiny, tiny flats that, that cost just about all my pension for my salary. It was just about everything. And I went to, to Stanford University and I went into uh, the, the ladies' restroom, and I walked into the restroom, uh, and I went into a booth, and it was absolutely immense. It was bigger than my living room, and I thought, you know, this university is so well endowed. My God, to make toilets that are so big, you could practically put a bed in there. Then I realized it was the first uh, uh, disabled toilet. Uh, it was when the disabled toilets first first began. And the other funny story uh, that I always love is after, after uh, in the middle of a concert, uh, the lineup for the ladies' room is always huge. And I was at Davies Symphony Hall not long after it was built. Um, beautiful, beautiful symphony hall in uh, San Francisco. And I was standing in line uh, waiting uh, to get in to relieve myself. And the line was clear out to the main hall and the men's uh, toilet they had nothing they just went in and went out just whoop just like that and I said to this woman standing next to me I said you know when they designed this why what happened that the men can get in and out so fast and the women can't and she said oh she said it's men architects but my funny funny story my best funny story is I always talk about what your pets can teach you and the one thing that your pets can teach you is don't keep them uh, don't keep their cages uh, in, in the toilet, in the bathrooms, because you're going to scare the hell out of any guests that come in. We had, as I've talked about before, a hamster, and the hamster was Lizzie. And before Lizzie dropped dead uh, from uh, unhappiness, uh, we kept her in the, we had two bathrooms. We had one downstairs and one upstairs, and we kept Lizzie in the downstairs bathroom. And I, uh, and at that time, People didn't know much about um, hamsters. That was not a, um, a popular pet. Uh, now it's more popular. There's even a website to help you with your hamster so that your hamster won't get sad like our Lizzie did and end up uh, dying. But uh, then hardly anybody had hamsters. They just didn't have them. That wasn't So it was very unusual. And we kept Lizzie uh, on a shelf in the downstairs bathroom. Um, and my mother uh, always, in those days, um, our entertainment was having people over for dinner. Um, that's pretty much what we did. We went to their house or they came to ours. And because my mother was such a good cook, they usually came to ours. And my father's older brother had uh, a wife who was a very round dumpling of a lady. She was my Aunt Molly. And she was just as wide as she was tall and she was adorable. She was just adorable. And she was a very a definite woman, with definite opinions and definite ways of doing things. And very, very big and very corseted. In those days, women's clothes were absolute torture chambers. And my Aunt Molly was laced into a corset and a boned brassiere and uh, garters with stockings. I mean, the underwear was was lethal and painful. How anyone could have eaten uh, the size dinner that my Aunt Molly ate is something I will never understand. But anyway, she was over at our house, and she was um, 
having dinner, and after dinner, as will happen, she decided to visit uh, the, the bathroom. And she went in the bathroom and didn't notice Lizzie right away. And she got herself unlaced and uncorseted and just about to sit on the can when Lizzie took to the wheel. And Aunt Molly looked and she saw this little rat in the toilet and she was terrified. I don't think she realized that the cage was locked. And she came running out, and I don't think I've ever seen anything so funny in my life, with a corset down to her knees. And uh, she was definitely at half-mast, and she was yelling, Ida, 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 that's my mother's name. There's a, there's a rat in the toilet. There's a rat in the toilet. And, of course, it wasn't a rat. It was Lizzie. It was Lizzie. Um, but as I say, so many funny, funny things happen in the toilet. But the one thing is that always in Britain... In America, I never got the sense that we admitted that anybody ever had to go to the toilet. Uh, it was just uh, it was just something we never we never admitted. I remember uh, when we were at Devil's Lake uh, for a summer vacation, and my aunt Tick was in the bathroom. She was going to the bathroom when we had visitors, and she was so shy that she refused to come out of the bathroom while the visitors were there because we didn't. Know. But here, here in England. They figured, nah, you're doing it. They talk about peeing, they talk about shitting, they talk about weeing, they talk about pooing. They, talk, they have no problem at all. It's not a problem. Uh, and I remember in Edinburgh, uh, at the assembly halls up on the mound, uh, we would go to these concerts, and there was an usher there, a red-headed Scotsman. And you can't beat a red-headed Scotsman for being a realist. And he... Uh, would always, uh, the intervals, if you know at the Edinburgh Festival, and this is the festival, not the Fringe, the, the, the concerts are very timed, and you've got to get one out to get the next one in. Um, but Andrew was the head usher at the assembly halls on the mound, and we would go to a concert, and at the interval, he would not allow the second half to begin until every lady had taken care of her personal needs. And I asked him why, and he said, because I want my ladies to be comfortable. So I'm saying to uh, the powers that be in Britain, now that you've let us out and we're allowed to have six people meet six people, if we meet in a garden the size of a football field, please do something so that all of the ladies can be comfortable. And thank you very much for joining me for my Monday uh, thought.